go through all of the games on the Sunday slate and the Monday slate, predicting all the winners and losers. So, first up on the Sunday, we have a matchup between the New York Jets and the Minnesota Vikings. This is a game that is going to take place in London, our first London game of the year. Um, so, unfortunately for you, if you are on the West Coast like I am, this game starts at 6.30 a.m., uh, way beyond when I am willing to wake up to watch football. So, I probably won't catch a whiff of this game. I'll wake up, maybe see the very end of it, uh, perhaps if there's an overtime period. But, we've got the Jets, who last week, very disappointing. Uh, offense was not clicking at all. Brees Hall was nowhere to be found. And, all these sacks on Aaron Rodgers, they have to go against a Vikings defense that has the most pressures and quarterback hits, as someone informed me in the comments last week. Uh, but yeah, this Vikings D-line, this Vikings defense as a whole is ferocious. They have been killing it all year long. Uh, that's partially what's gotten the Vikings to this 4-0 undefeated record, being able to topple the big teams like the 49ers and the Texans, whereas the Jets couldn't get it done against the Broncos last week, failed to even score one touchdown. So after seeing how these two teams have looked, especially last week, I'm going to have to go with the Vikings here. Like, uh, Vikings just all around have been playing phenomenal football, especially in the first half of these games. Sam Darnold comes out hot, throws two touchdowns in those periods already, giving them usually a good lead to work with, and then they just have to make sure they don't blow it, and they haven't yet, so. First up, got the Vikings over the Jets. Next, going into our normal allotted Sunday time frame, uh, 10 a.m. if you're on the west, 1 p.m. if you're on the east, we've got a matchup between the Carolina Panthers and the Chicago Bears. This should be an interesting game, you know. You have the number one overall pick in Caleb Williams, and it could have been a matchup between the number one and the number one in back-to-back -back years if Bryce Young was starting. But he has done so poorly that instead we get Andy Dalton. Now, uh, comparing these two teams to their last week performance, we had the Panthers who came up 10 points shy against the Bengals in a game where they did fall into a hole, but they battled very hard to stay within it, you know, I think down only seven at points in the fourth. It was a competitive game, obviously, a little out of hand, a little out of their favor, but they still tried. Uh, the Bears, on the contrary, they win over the Rams in semi-convincing fashion, you know. Not the best day for Caleb Williams, but no interception, which is key. And then DeAndre Swift came alive, you know, he's being utilized, not even utilized, just being effective as both a rusher and a passer is pretty big. Now, in the last two weeks, I think the Panthers' offense has been rolling, uh, especially after that Andy Dalton switch, only after that Andy Dalton switch. They have been at a level that is honestly very impressive, multiple touchdown games, and they can get it done on the ground game as well. For the Bears, we've seen one game where they can really run it. Other games, it's been iffy. DeAndre Swift, not at all effective. Roshan Johnson, here and there. Caleb Williams, not that big of a runner. Um, and as far as offensive chemistry, I still don't trust the Bears that much. Like Williams, though he didn't throw any interceptions last week, he also only threw for like 137, so, so far, the way that it's banned out, we either get Caleb Williams, where it's him dialed up to 120% college version, where, yeah, he can throw for 350 yards and three touchdowns, but that comes with three turnovers, or you get a very conservative Caleb Williams that is not making mistakes, but he's also not making enough plays that I think you can outdo an offense like the Panthers, as weird as that sounds, as weird as that sounds. I think Andy Dalton and this Panthers team offensively have the edge over the Bears. Now maybe the Bears defense steps up and uh, if they can convert, if they can get points off defense, then I think they're set. But it really will come down to how many turnovers they can 
get out of the Panthers if it's more than one, then I think that the Bears have a good shot. If the Panthers limit themselves to one or less turnovers, I think that this the game is theirs to win, really. They can definitely steal this one from the Bears. Yeah, and that's what I'm picking. Next up, we have a matchup between the Cleveland Browns and the Washington Commanders. Now, this really is not that hard, uh, especially after the embarrassing pick I made last week when I had the Commanders losing to the Cardinals. We've seen what they've done back-to-back -back weeks, you know, two weeks ago. No punts, no turnovers. Gene Daniels, near-perfect game. After that, 42-point special. Uh, performance by this commander's team absolutely rolled the Cardinals. The Browns defense has not been all that impressive. And the commander's offense, on the other hand, has been exceptional. And the Browns offense really not cutting it at all this year. I don't think that there's any way they keep up in this game. Got the Browns with not even surpassing 18 points in a game so far this year. Whereas the commanders, they, they can get that in a quarter if they really want. So... I don't think it bodes well for the Browns if their if their defense plays exceptionally well, uh, like unbelievably, not like anything they've done this year, maybe. But I'm not gonna give them a chance. I think that it's gonna be the Commanders winning this game. Next up, a real doozy. We've got the Miami Dolphins taking on the, the New England Patriots. If you are not a fan of either of these teams, I would not recommend watching this game. It is going to be a rough one for the Dolphins. Not 100% sure who they're starting at their quarterback quite yet. Uh, it's got to be between Skylar Thompson and Tyler Huntley. I don't think they've picked up anyone else. So those are your, your guys. Uh, for the Patriots, still rolling out with Jacoby Brissett. That's fine, but you know what the offense you're getting with Jacoby Brissett? It's going to be like 120 yards passing, a couple sacks here and there. Uh, hopefully, under and over at most. Really, I think the Patriots, they need to not turn this game over. It's, it's theirs to win, honestly. This is one of the few games where I think they might actually be favored heading into it. You're playing at home. The other team is more disorganized than you. Obviously, they do still have Devon HN. They still do have Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. But the, the quarterback cannot get any of these guys the ball. And so you don't have to respect the wideouts as much. You can hone in more on the run game. Once their run game is taken out, they haven't been able to get anything in the passing game. So... Um, you know, knowing our luck, maybe this is the week they find it. They figure it out. Tyler Huntley looks like a Pro Bowl quarterback. He never should have gotten that Pro Bowl, but maybe he puts out a Pro Bowl performance because as a Ravens backup, he wasn't bad. Um, but from what I've seen, they're actually more dysfunctional than the Patriots. The Patriots, as long as Ramondre Stevenson doesn't fumble the ball and Jacoby Brissett doesn't throw a pick six, it's very winnable. I'm going to give it to them in this one. I hope they don't let me down. But yeah, locking in a Patriots victory here against the worst team. <laughs> Alright, after that we can continue into our next matchup, which will be an AFC South game between the Colts and the Jaguars, the two bottom feeders in this one. Uh, we've got, actually, I guess the Colts are not as bottom feeder as the Titans, so I revoke that. But, yeah. Colts were sitting at 2-2, two and two. the Jaguars still looking for their first victory. Another game that has, I don't know, I feel like this game, if both teams had it figured out, it could be like a 40-40 offensive-powered bloodbath, but considering how each team is struggling in their own way, I don't expect it to be that exciting. I think there'll be a couple turnovers. Not the best of play by either quarterback. They're both figuring things out. Trevor Lawrence hasn't won a game in a while. It's been quite a stretch, I think, dating back into, like, week 13 last year. Maybe even more than that. Definitely been a minute since we've seen a winning game from him or that nor noteworthy of a performance. Anthony Richardson, the hip injury wasn't that major, but I guess it depends. It depends. 
depends on the game. In game one, Anthony Richardson looked good ish. Uh, after that, not very good. He's thrown so many interceptions this year. Start of last week, he did look impressive. He looked fine. Best passer rating he has posted. He threw for like 77 yards. Very small sample size. He didn't play the whole game. Now, with him coming back, I honestly will downgrade this Colts team a little bit. I think that Joe Flacco, his leadership, his ability as a quarterback in this league is still slightly better than Anthony Richardson. Uh, obviously, Richardson much younger, way higher potential, and once he figures it out, he will be better, but I don't think he's reached it. I think last year we saw this Colts team get that close to the playoffs because Gardner Minshew was at the helm. Now, Anthony Richardson showing once again a veteran, more seasoned quarterback presence could come into this team and probably take them a little further, but that's not what they want. They want to train up their guy AR-15, so if you're Anthony Richardson, try your best. Try your best not to throw a pick, and I think the Colts will be happy. For the Jaguars, you really did play a good game last week, so if you can tr recreate that, get that rushing yardage up again, the Colts have not been the best at limiting the run. If you can establish run early, you have a chance. I'm not going to say there's no chance. The Jaguars, the 0-4 is bad. There is, this is a team you can beat. They're going to have some probably self-inflicted uh, mistakes that you can capitalize on if you're not outdoing them in the department. So uh, Ultimately, I will give it to the Colts. They're better put together. They've been playing better. Last week, taking down an undefeated Steelers team, I'm not going to knock that. Obviously, Joe Flacco was helping them out in that one, but can I give it to the Colts? <laughs> Next up, a very fun matchup between the Buffalo Bills and the Houston Texans. I honestly am looking forward to this game more than the Patriots-Dolphins game. Uh, I think that's fair to say. You've got Josh Allen and this Bills team who were at a 3-0 start before coming to a grinding halt against the Ravens last week, absolutely getting demolished in that game. Then you have the Texans, the Texans also sitting at a record of 3-1, three, three impressive games except for when they got embarrassed by the Vikings, so both teams at the same record towards the top of the AFC suffered one loss only, but that loss was brutal. Now, a little bit of added fun in this game is the fact that it is the Stephon Diggs revenge game just coming off of the Bills in a trade. Uh, he was the go-to guy for Josh Allen for quite a stretch there, but they could never get it done, regardless of how much in-season success they had, all those AFC East championships. They could not progress to the Super Bowl, and I think that was a big frustration point, always losing to the Chiefs. Now, uh, now he's on new offense with CJ Stroud, with Nico Collins, with uh, Dank Dell, really, really loaded on the offensive side of the ball, and the Bills, they had been managing to get it done those first three weeks, but I think last week is a testament of what is to come. They have things they need to address on the offensive side of the ball, like it's not a sustainable offense. I think that they don't have true playmakers like that. Don't think Kincaid, sure, uh, but Khalil Shaker, Mac Hollins, um, MVS, Keon Coleman, these are guys that are either new to the league or just kind of like complimentary wide receiver two, wide receiver three type downs. You have a Patriots-esque wide receiver room, and uh, Josh Allen, he can he can try his best, but at the end of the day, it's not that impressive of a group when you take these two skill positions head to head. Like, there's so much more talent on this Texans offense, I feel like, on oh, that coming off the performance the Bills just did, I'm going to give them another loss here. I think that the Texans, they are, yeah, not the best performance against Jaguars, but they know uh, limit those penalties, they can be better, and offensively they just have so much that they need covered. Their run game, not as impressive. I don't know if Joe Mixon will be making it back into the starting lineup this week. I think the answer 
is more so, yes, I believe I saw Game Acres not scheduled to make that many points in fantasy, and that's what I'm going off of, but I don't really trust the Bills. I, you might know, uh, in my playoff prediction video, I don't have the Bills making the playoff this year, and yeah, they came out to a great start. I do think it is more in my favor to pick them to lose here, but I also do think that the Texans in terms of season long output i am expecting the texans to be a, a better team here and they need to come out and prove it both teams so far they've met one really good team and they kind of got embarrassed like they they did not have a good showing so proof it came for both teams if the texans want to be taken seriously not a second year quarterback type team but like an actual contender a top tier team they're gonna have to win this game and i'm expecting them to do it now, after that, very fun matchup between the Ravens and the Bengals, uh, both teams. At the bottom of this division, uh, you've got the Steelers all the way at the top of the AFC North, and then uh, Ravens in the mix. Actually, I guess the Browns are probably at the bottom, the bottom of the bottom. Bengals have tied up with them in terms of record. So, Bengals sitting at a record of 1-3, and three, only win against Carolina last week. Ravens, back-to-back, -back, very impressive victories. They're at 2-2, two and two, uh, coming off of 270 plus rushing yards against both the Cowboys, and then the Bills. Uh, taking down the 3-0 and o Bills in the fashion that they did, I think I do have to just give them the edge here. The Bengals. It's going to be a competitive game. I think the Bengals also know where they are uh, in terms of their ability to make this a salvageable season. They're going to be in a grit and grind mode, trying their absolute hardest. This is almost like must win territory. Obviously, picked it up last week. It's going to be a tall task now. But if you look at it this way, the Bengals, upon winning this game, they would be at 2 and 3. The Ravens would be at 2 and 3. Then you have the Steelers, who are at the top of the division, but they suffered their first loss. So the gap isn't as bad anymore. And the Steelers play the Cowboys this week. So it's kind of a 50 50. Uh, obviously, maybe you're going to be rooting for the Cowboys to win, but both teams could theoretically only be like one game beyond it. So the Bengals, they need it. They absolutely need it. And the Ravens, they want it. I don't think they're in a need territory anymore, but I do think that they're just more impressive so far. Like they have more figured out. Their offensive identity in the last two weeks is very clear cut. Lamar is going to throw for 150, two touchdowns. Uh, they're going to rush for. They're going to try and rush for 200. That is their game plan. If they're at all successful, it's over. The Bengals cannot do it. Uh, the Bengals, on the other hand. They won last week, but I'm still not as confident in the team. I'm going to go Ravens here. I, I can very well see the Bengals winning, or like trying their best to win it. I think they're more desperate, and they need the win more, and that will compel them to, you know, reach, maybe treat it like a playoff game more so. Uh, whereas the Ravens, I think it's possible we see them take their foot off the gas. It could be another one of those games where they go up by like a score or two they think they have in the bag, and last second the Bengals steal it from them uh, because they get sloppy in the fourth. I feel like that's very much at play and at risk in this game. We'll find out, but for now, I'm going to give it to the Ravens. Next up... Oh, sorry. I probably shouldn't have blown in the mic, but a game between the Las Vegas Raiders and the Denver Broncos. Very interesting matchup here. You've got the the Raiders coming off of a win against the, Bron the Browns. Uh, not the most impressive. You know, still shorthanded. No Devontae Adams in that game. Probably no Devontae Adams ever again. Uh, I don't know, it's very hard to say. His hamstring injury seems like it's been limiting him. He is not expected to play in this game. There's also reports that they are looking to deal with Devontae Adams to a different team. There was a post put out saying that we have maybe seen Devontae Adams play his last game in a Raiders uniform, and then head coach Antonio Pierce liked the post. Uh, so I don't know, I don't know what's going on. 
obviously shouldn't read that much into social media, but that is very weird. Uh, don't know what to expect out of that situation. The Broncos, on the other hand, I am not moved by their offense. I think offensively, they still need work done. Very good stuff two weeks ago against the Buccaneers, but last week, a severe regression. Bo Nix only throws 60 yards. They get it done mainly off their defense, and I think I am going to give them the victory here just because their defense has been so stout and impressive. We've got last two weeks, nine points apiece to both the Buccaneers and the Jets after both teams had been rolling. Uh, this defense is just so sharp. Very, very, you know, uh, what's the word? Uh, when an immovable object, sorry, when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object, I think they're operating like an immovable, immovable object. And the Raiders, by no means, are an unstoppable force. Uh, the Broncos have been able to take down the two teams prior. I have to give them the benefit of the doubt here that they're going to take out the Raiders. Like, obviously, both teams kind of like coin flip. They're, they're so weird. <laughs> I don't think either of them are doing exactly what I'm expecting them to do. So. Who oh, no. knows, maybe they both surprised me this week and they flipped the outcome on me, but based on defensive strength, I'm going to go with the Broncos here. <laughs> Next up, we have a matchup between the Arizona Cardinals and the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, 49ers still not in the winning category. They're at 2-2. Two two. Impressive win over the Patriots last week. Uh, Could have even been better, in my opinion. They could have limited the turnovers, had an even larger dominant victory. Cardinals, on the other hand, I don't think that they looked that great against the Commanders. I did see a lot of that game, and they just were not productive offensively. The rushing game, James Conner did a good job, but in the passing game, they really were limited. Uh, and that's a Commanders defense. That's not a defense that really has been gaining that much respect. Uh, you saw how they allowed the Bengals to play. No turnovers, no punts. So the commander's defense was sort of porous, and the Cardinals could do nothing against it. So shout out to Bobby Wagner and that commander's defensive front. But at the same time, Cardinals, if you couldn't do it then, this 49ers defense, I do think it's still a much better one. You're going to face players like Fred Warner and... Other guys, other guys, I don't know who they're uh, dealing with in terms of defensive injury, but they've got a... Uh, wow, really blanking hard. Uh, Tufanga, I think it is. Uh, a bunch of guys in the, the secondary that all deserve respect, but none are coming to mind right now. Very much just babbling. Uh, either way, offensively, if you couldn't stop the commanders, it might be tough to stop the 49ers offense as well. You know, Brock Purdy had a pretty good game two weeks ago. Last week, not as nice, but still very manageable. They've got Depot back. They still always had Brandon Ayuk. Juwan Jennings is having a kind of a breakout season. Then, no, CMC, but you do have Jordan Mason, who has put together a very nice stretch of games. And then George Kittle is back. So, all things considered, 49ers much closer to 100% than they were like two weeks ago. And I think they take it. I think they take it with ease, uh, if I'm being honest. And I go with the 49ers victory there. Next up, a matchup between the Giants and the Seahawks. Uh, Seahawks have been rolling. They have been a force to be reckoned with so far this season. Even though they lost last week against the Lions, they still put up 29 points. And uh, yeah, it was a fun game, a very fun game on Monday night. They were playing the best quarterback they had of that until that point in the season. And Jared Goff, perfect game, like absolute perfection. 18 of 18, threw for touchdowns, caught a touchdown, can't ask for anything better. They're not going to see the same level of quarterback play against the Giants. You know, 
that is not who Daniel Jones is. He's not going to be wheeling and dealing like that. The Seahawks, I think, this is going to be much more in the vein of their first three games where you easily can destroy this team if you like. So I'm expecting the Seahawks three-touchdown game, four-touchdown game, somewhere in the high 20s scoring. And I don't think that the Giants are going to be able to match them. They are... They couldn't run it on the Cowboys after the Cowboys laid up 270. Don't know what to expect out of them. Giants. I, I have to say that Daniel Jones didn't do the worst, but the red zone offense is just not good. So I'm expecting them to be limited, probably in like the low 10s, the Seahawks in the high 20s. Like, I'm expecting a two possession victory here by the Seahawks. Next up, we have a matchup between the Green Bay Packers and the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, Jordan Love is back. You know, if you didn't get a chance to see him last week, depends on if you're rooting for him, if you're hating on him. If you're hating on him, I think it's bad news. Uh, he looked good. He did look good in the tail half of, his, of the game uh, when excluding the interception at, like, the top of the fourth and of the third. Uh, he definitely can get the ball where he needs to get it. He can throw for 380, as he did, four touchdowns. Like, a uh, very Jameis Winston-esque game, but for him to be playing like that, if he just doesn't make the same mistakes, he's back. He's like, he doesn't look that limited by his knee. The Rams, on the other hand, he lost to the Bears, bro. Like, how can I possibly forgive you for that? It's such a weird season for the Rams so far. Uh, Opening week obviously was a very tough matchup. Then get absolutely stumped by the Cardinals for no reason. Then you beat the 49ers and then you lose to the Bears. Truly, truly unpredictable. Don't know what's going on there in Los Angeles based on their trend because I'm picking them to lose. They'll come out with victory, but I am going with the Packers in here. I think that offensively they know what they're doing more than the Rams do. Uh, even with that Jordan Love injury, they just are a stronger offensive unit. Rams still incredibly injured in the wideout section. Uh, Kyron Williams couldn't really help them, couldn't bail them out of it last week. And, yeah, defensively, Xavier McKinney having a great year so far. Uh, this Packers defense, it was a tall task. The Vikings, one of the best teams in the NFL thus far. They couldn't stop them, that's fine. I do think that the Rams... They can't be stopped, and you will stop them. So, expecting a Packers victory there. Finally, we move into our Sunday night football matchup. This is, I feel like, a lot of history going into this matchup. Two, dynastically speaking, top teams, top dog teams. You've got the Cowboys and the Steelers. A lot of old head fans are going to love this matchup. Um, as it stands... It should be interesting. I, I have seen that like it is pretty split on who's gonna win this game because the Cowboys at two and two, uh, and the Steelers at three and one. Now the Cowboys getting it done on Thursday night. They get a little bit of that extra time to recover. Mini bye week, um, beating the Giants really doing a lot to not make themselves further ahead in that game. A lot of mistakes, a lot of penalties. Steelers, on the other hand, I mean, a lot of smiles, too, compared to two games ago where CeeDee Lamb was so frustrated. He was having the time of his life last week. The Steelers, uh, game planning, they came out ready to face Anthony Richardson. Joe Flacco comes in, really gets them a lead, uh, and they try their best. They almost catch up, but they couldn't do it. It'll be interesting. Uh, I do think that the Steelers are more so, excuse me, more so a run-first offense. Uh, they're they're going to try and get it done behind the legs of Najee, uh, not Jalen Warren, but Justin Fields. I, I don't know if Jalen Warren is ready to be checked back in. He missed last week. But uh, running the ball was a big point of difficulty against the Colts last week. That was something that they did well at eliminating from the Steelers' game plan that and the fact that they could actually throw the ball I think it was not to the Steelers benefit. Now the Cowboys you were able to limit Devin Secondary, but I will say the Giants backfield is one of, if not the worst backfield in all of football so being able to stop them I'm not going to give you that much credit. And then it's Daniel Jones you're preying on Daniel Jones not being able to beat you that's 
that's rare, that's gonna come true more often than not. Obviously, I was vouching for the Giants in that game, because it's the Cowboys. At the end of the day, the Cowboys are capable of all things. They can win big, they can lose big. I'm expecting the Steelers' victory here. I think that the Steelers' running back room is more impressive. I think that as a rusher, Justin Fields is more dynamic, and we saw him throw for 300 yards last week. Those are both marks that the Giants' offense was not capable of. They weren't scoring touchdowns in that way. Uh, and so, Steelers, I do expect them to be able to get at least two scores here, the Cowboys. So, wild card, like, they, they truly are one week good, one week so bad. Uh, I'm expecting a close loss. I think it'll be a fun game. They will battle hard, but in terms of how the Steelers have been winning their games and how their defense has looked, I like them more than I like the Cowboys at this point. The Cowboys are at 2-2. Two and two. I think they're truly a 2-2 two two team. The Steelers at the 3-1. and one. You can say it is their schedule, but even then, I like the way that they've been winning games. I am more confident in the, the style of football that they're playing. It's very Steeler-esque. <laughs> and I think that they can have success with it. Mike Tomlin, trust him more as a coach. I think that they go and win this game, bring them to 4-1. And, and I think the Cowboys drop back into losing territory. And finally, we've got a matchup between the Saints and the Chiefs on Monday night. Very fun game. The Saints, back-to-back -back losses. Close, close losses, I might add, though. Uh, barely losing to the Eagles in the last couple, of, in the last minute, basically. Uh, the, Steel, the Eagles get that last-minute touchdown off of Saquon Barkley, and then the Saints can't keep up. The Saints last week take the lead with a minute left, trying to do it to the Falcons. But then Young Waiku, 58-yard game-winning field goal. They're barely losing in these losses. It's one possession. It's almost less than three points, or it is less than three points. The Chiefs, on the other hand, you sit at 4-0, but I do not think you are that strong. I don't think that they are the high and mighty Chiefs. Uh, they've gotten a lot of luck on their side, if I'm being honest. Like, week one, one inch away from not losing that game, but it going to overtime. You, it wasn't an easy victory. One play away in that game. Falcons game. Kyle Pitts missed on the touchdown. Like, a little bit of whole thing, maybe. But if the Falcons connect, uh, that Chiefs could have been a Chiefs loss. Uh, the other week against the Bengals. I think that the Bengals also very close. <laughs> it was a lot of one-score wins. And even last week against the Chargers, Justin Herbert... I didn't expect him to play. He played. They did a good job of eliminating him. But you take out your best receiver in Rasheed Rice. Hollywood Brown is done on the year. Isaiah Pacheco is out for so long. All the Saints have to do is address Travis Kelsey. And it will be truly dire at that point. Maybe Kareem Hunt goes off. Maybe not. Offensively, if the Saints can get anything going, this is theirs. I think truly, like, the Chiefs are so short-handed. And they have been lucky. They have been looking. This is the week that they suffer their first loss. I don't think that this Chiefs team has enough to get it done. Their Patrick Mahomes is not playing well. I, I don't. I truly don't think he is. He has thrown a pick in every single game thus far. He is not at his like two touchdown, no interception type offense, offensive pr production. He has been mistake prone. He is going to throw a pick in this game. The Saints are going to be able to benefit from mistakes and turnovers and the Chiefs don't have anyone to really throw the ball to. Obviously they won last year doing that the whole year, but then they tried to address it and now being ending up in the situation in week 5 is different from starting off the year like that. So the Saints back to back close losses, huge wins in the first two weeks. I am trusting you to get it done and the Chiefs their first loss get to 3-2 and two stand running for this, uh, you know, NFC South. It's anyone's game. It's anyone's game. After Thursday night, truly anyone can be at the top of this NFC South. You put yourself in the running if you get a win on Monday night, and I'm trusting you guys to do it. <laughs> Derek Carr, you know, you couldn't beat Patrick Mahomes when you're in the division. You've left the division. Show him that this new team can get it done. Uh, yeah. So there you have it. That, uh, that concludes all of my predictions for this week. You might notice that it's a 
smaller slate, and that's because we've heard our first uh, teams with bye weeks. So the four teams on bye this week are the Philadelphia Eagles, the Tennessee Titans, the Los Angeles Chargers, and the Detroit Lions. So those teams were missing from our lineups. Two fewer games, but still an exciting Sunday of ad. Once again, I will go through all my picks. I've got the Vikings over the Jets, the Panthers over the Bears, the Commanders over the Browns, the Patriots over the Dolphins, the Colts over the Jaguars, the Texans over the Bills, the Ravens over the Bengals, the Broncos over the Raiders, the 49ers over the Cardinals, the Seahawks over the Giants, the Packers over the Rams, the Steelers over the Cowboys, and the Saints over the Chiefs. They're those are my predictions. Let me know in the comments down below how you feel. Oh, what is your biggest upset prediction of the week? Do you agree with mine? Do you disagree? Let me know. Uh, I would love to hear your explanations. And as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoy content like this, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be putting out more videos as the weeks progress. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you.